we've got a full-on river here. It's a wetty. Yeah, it's a wetty. The horn, it won't sound like that. Welcome along, lady and gentlemen, and welcome along to 2023. This is my first bike review of 2023, and here's the bike. It is the Honda CB650R. So this is the, uh, it was the CB650F a couple of years ago. It was re, uh, re, re, remade, <laughs> spruced up, and it was redressed into this neo calf look now i did do a test on the cb 1000 r a couple of weeks ago so uh, if you want to see the, what i thought the cb 1000 r i'll put a link at the top there but this is the 650 r so of course for 2023 honda have got the new 650 hornet coming out so i'm wondering whether this bike is in its really its last days of uh, production it could be this the last year you can get your hands on one of these because I, I can see the Hornet taking over from this machine. But what is fantastic about this machine, and in my view, sort of better than the Hornet, is this bike has a straight four engine. 650 cc's of straight four beautifulness and a 12,000 RPM peak power figure. So she is a right little screamer. So stick around, get yourself some, a cup of something warm, because it's a little bit nippy today, and I'll be straight back after the intro. Chopsy, roll it. So this bike will cost you 7,700, I think it is, 7,699 I believe, full LED lighting, as I say, a brilliant straight four engine, it's, it's a reasonable sized bike, it's 202 kilos, but that's because it's, you know, it's a decent size, this could be your first big bike, let's call it, your first big bike, show her upside down forks, non-adjustable but big piston shower balance free forks radial brakes a, a preload only adjustable rear shock which i've wound all the way up for maximum preload because i'm a big fatty so yeah so that that is it basically nice gold wheels matte sort of blue paintwork let us jump aboard and see what that little 650 screamer sounds like can't wait starting her up You've got a little LCD screen there. I think it's a similar screen that was on the, the old CB1000. So this bike is brand new for 2020. Well, it's not brand new, it's been a while, but this is a brand new bike from Honda. But, you know, it is a bit old school. You know, you've, you've got very basic traction control. You've got ABS, you know, you've got LCD dash. So there's no quick shifter and blipper. So this is sort of showing its age a little bit, this bike. But it's still very nice. Have a listen to this. The highlight of this machine is that engine, as I mentioned. Ooh, you don't get that of a parallel twin. <laughs> oh yeah, what a sound, what a sound. You know, unfortunately these days, everyone is, for their middleweight bikes, everyone is going for the old parallel twins now i mean including honda with the new you know the new hornet and trans out you know these straight these small capacity straight four engines i think are going to be lost to history soon no one's going to make them because i think they're even though this bike is euro 5 obviously i think with a straight four i think they struggle to meet emissions in the next round of more stringent emissions they're going to struggle so these straight four engines are going to be lost into history and it is a real shame. I mean, the parallel twins are great, don't get me wrong. But there's just something about a straight four. It's a, it just feels a little bit more grown up. Oh, look at the water here. I thought we were going to have, a, <laughs> have some dry roads today. But uh, looking at this, maybe not. So I'm six foot two, 20 and a half stone. I've got a bit of Christmas padding on. 
so you know i'm a bit i'm a big old unit i'm too heavy for this bike i would suggest you know this is as i say perhaps your first big bike for a younger rider not a great big old fatty like me so you know the suspension is going to be struggling i have wound the rear shock i've, I've maxed out the preload on the rear shot which i think is helping and the front is completely unadjustable from a comfort point of view being a larger guy you know it feels like a little bit of a small bike even though i think it is bigger than the likes of the the trident and the competition it's a little bit bigger but it does feel it feels nice i mean i'm in a nice upright position the pegs aren't too high i can actually not that the seat and actually i've got a look it's sort of sunken a little bit and i can feel just the very tail of my bottom of my lower back on the sort of back seat but um, it's not bad it's pretty pretty comfortable uh, dry road just give it a little bit of a tickle in yeah the front it's pretty cold today got to be a little bit careful i don't know what tires this has got on it if this is anything like it's thousand cb brother you know it's more of a roadster than an out and out sports bike sports naked front brake reasonable a little bit uh, not the sharpest ever you know you've got to pull it but that's probably just down to pad material pretty reasonable let's give it a scream So the riding position is pretty okay actually for a smaller middleweight naked even though i'm a big fatty it's pretty reasonable the brakes will stop you at the front quite a lot of power there the rear brake is actually very nice good performing rear brake i mean this bike is identical to the cbr 650r it's, it's the same chassis you know same engine all the same but basically without the fairing and slightly higher bars so it, it's a good platform this bike it is a very good platform and for me i think the highlight is that straight four engine i mean it's only 650 cc it's 93 horsepower so similar power to the new hornet if i said it was 73 in our last video it's, I'll get it wrong. it's actually 91 i think so it might be a couple more horsepower more than the new hornet um i think it's around 50 or 60 newton meters of torque i'll pop it on the screen because i can't remember so i mean it's reasonable but like any straight four you know when you open it up especially with a big fatty on it takes a little while to wind up you know you don't get that instant grunt like you do on the reverse crank parallel twins i mean you do get a lot of initial punch on those parallel twin motors you know, and that, that, that's what they do, and that does make them perhaps a little bit more playful than a, a small capacity straight four. But the small capacity straight four is all about the revs. It's all about screaming and revs, which is never a bad thing. What is nice about a straight four is when you slow it all down, you get those lovely manners, you know, you can have it in a very high gear, this is top gear at 30, at 2,000 revs, and everything's smooth, you know, everything's easy even though this is an older bike you know this is obviously fuel injected of course it is but it's not ride it's not ride by wire so you've got a conventional throttle a conventional throttle bodies so you've got a nice a very nice throttle response you know not like some of the kawasaki's which can be a little bit snatchy especially like the z900 let's say and even the Z650, even though that's a parallel twin, that's a little bit snatchy as well. But Hondas have sorted their throttle response. Very, very nice throttle response. You know, there's no remapping required here. One slight criticism with this bike is there's a bit of waggle in the throttle tube. Just needs adjusting on the cables. But that's just this bike. If I'd noticed that before I left, I would have corrected that because I don't like a waggly throttle. Especially when you've got no quick shifter and blipper. And you've got to obviously blip but when you do the, the downshifts you've got basic traction control you know very basic traction control no imus very basic abs you know just relying on wheel speed sensors and what i do like with the traction control is there's just a single button that you hold down for a couple of seconds and the little light comes on to say the traction controls off so there's a button just to turn off the traction control which is great for wheelies and naughtiness Let's put it back on because it's a little bit shitty today. I don't think we're going to be pulling any fat ones today. What about women, not wheelies? Not we doing any wheelies either. Oh, through the little tight stuff, it's quite nice. I'm going to bang it down. Let's give it a little bit. Second gear. 
hear that engine again. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of it's it's I do love a straight four, you know. They're a bit more grown up I think than a parallel twin, aren't they? I just think a parallel twin, I could see why manufacturers make a parallel twin. They're cheaper to produce, the engines are lighter, they're easily easier to fit in different chassis if you want to use that engine in multiple bikes. And they make a lot of sense, they're talky, they sound great, but they're just not quite as grown up as a straight four, are they? I don't know, maybe it's me showing me age. And I do love a parallel twin, don't get me wrong, if it's the right parallel twin. So I'm looking forward to testing out the new Hornet. I've got the new Hornet coming in a couple of weeks time. I think probably a month's time. Probably a month's time the new Hornet is arriving and I can see how it compares to it. It's quite handy, I've borrowed this bike now. So I can tell you how it compares to this. Because uh, so far this is pretty good, you know. You know one of my reviews will be like this, don't you? <laughs> I'm not just going to poodle it around. It's going to get a workout on one of my reviews and uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. I mean, I've ridden the, the Trident. I guess you could say the Trident is a good competitor to this bike. The Trident is actually a couple of hundred quid more than this, would you believe? The Trident is more expensive than this. The Trident's also very good. It, it's hard for me to remember, really. Look at all this water again. It's hard to remember. I remember the suspension on the Trident was very firm, quite harsh, but you know, really quite nice in the twisties. This is a this is a softer ride than the Trident, I'll tell you that. But I think it does have some great quality on this. I mean, the components, the look, the finishes, the plastics, the switch gear is very, very good on the Hondas. Very, very good, and this is no exception. So. I would have thought this would be a more expensive bike than the Trident, you know, being a straight four, you know, it's a bit more of a complicated engine than the Trident's triple, but no, this is a couple of hundred quid cheaper than the Trident. Is it better? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to say at this stage. What I am noticing, and one of the slight downsides with a straight four, is you can get a little bit of buzz, high frequency buzz through the bars and through the bike, and I'm getting a little bit on this. You know, there's a little bit of buzz on the bars. You know, as the revs increase, it gets slightly worse. You can also feel it a little bit through the seat and through the tank. Not excessive. You know, similar to what you're getting on the uh, Kawasaki 900 RS, let's say. So, a, a little bit of a buzz, but nothing too extreme. But don't expect it to be as smooth. I think the, uh, the CB1000 was smoother. There was less vibrations on the CB1000. Right, let's take her up the hill climb and see how she performs. I think it's a little bit damp, it's cold. Got to be a bit careful here. I don't think Honda want this back in carrier bags. But let's see. There's a dry line. Dry line! Yeah, it's quite nice actually, it's got a nice sort of motion. <laughs> a little bit damp here. A little bit of driving third, it's a little bit flat, I mean it's only a 650. So your mid-range, you've got you've to leave it boiling really. But, I like the way it changes direction, you can move around on the seats. Power, power, power. 8,000. Brakes are decent, it's not too much weight transfer actually, when you go on the brakes, when you're opening it up. Like on the brakes, it, it, it doesn't do too bad. The CB1000 actually, the suspension on the CB1000 feels, I, be, I think, a little bit softer than this. I think this feels a little bit more sporty than the CB1000, you know. So you've got a nice little LCD there with your gear indicator, you know, your nice little rev counter, but nothing analogue. I do like an analogue rev counter, especially on a, on a bike which screams. It's always nice to see that bouncing off the red, the red line but it's, it's decent it's quite small the rev counter big speedo you know rev as i said fuel gauge proper fuel gauge doesn't seem to be any miles till empty though but you have got a fuel gauge temp engine temperature you know that sort of stuff 
time but no sort of outside air temperature fairly straightforward instrumentation I would say drop a couple of cods tentatively go around here third gear yeah it's nice this this is, this is a good fun little bike seven and a half thousand pounds doesn't get you much these days as far as motorcycles go but this is very very decent oh, it's a rather wet corner isn't it let's try on this side of the road though <laughs> oh, it's, it's a bit wet here I'm glad I didn't go barreling around that at high speed look at this it's a bit of a wetty it's a bit of a wetty isn't it this guy in this white van is right up my ass. He's a bit of a dick. I'm going to pull over and let him pass. Because he's a bit of a dick. Look at this. There's so much water. So much water around. I'm going to turn around actually. I was going to give a little bit of a sort of 0 to 60 power run, but it's too wet down here. Can't do anything down here. Look at this. Wetter than an otter's pocket. Wetter than a haddock's bathing costume. Yeah, it's a wetty. Watch it, mate. You want to slow down a bit there? <laughs> okay, we've got clear road behind us. Let's give it a little bit of a tickle. Up to 60. Okay, that might have been slightly over 60. It's not bad, and I guarantee you the Hornet won't sound like that when we do the first, second and third thrash through. That sounds beautiful. You cannot beat a straight four for a bit of engine noise. Well, maybe a V4, but certainly not a parallel twin. So there we are, the little CB650R. I can't believe I've never ridden this bike before. How can this have slipped off of my radar? Oh, it's the Adventure Boys. How can this have slipped off of my radar and I've never tried one? So massive thanks to Honda UK for lending me this. Much appreciated. And I can't wait to get the new Hornet in three or four weeks' time and compare it to this. That would be really interesting. What's it, how's it, what's it going to be like, the, uh, you know, the parallel twin compared to this beautiful straight four? I'm sure the quality and everything will be there. The Hornet is actually 700 quid cheaper than this, so it's 6999 the Hornet. This is, I think, is 7699. So, you know, 700 quid more expensive for this. But how long will this bike be around? Once the Hornet comes out, how long until this bike gets dropped from sale, you know? So um, it could be your last chance to own one of these this year if you want a new cb 650 cp650r and it is very good so there we go guys thanks for watching as always and i'll see you on the next video cheers guys oh geez oh geez we've got even more water here we've got a full-on river here oh no it's all right it's just under a foot that six inches Yes, this is a little bit of a wet one today. I don't want to stop and put my foot. I don't want to stall it here and put my feet down. Oh Jesus, it's a wet one, isn't it? It's a wetty. It's a wetty. <laughs>